Josh Friedman, how do you talk to people who have very different views or, or um, climb, people who have, you have different values, different sets of views on, on energy, climate, et cetera? Careful, carefully. <laughs> um, I have a, a family member who's very conservative. And when this topic of uh, tonight's conversation came up, I was thinking about the interactions with him and how I have, like sex and politics, kind of sometimes retreated from, you know, it's Thanksgiving and like, oh, don't bring that up. But I feel <laughs> it's so important. Um, and I also am kind of interested in his perspective. And my solution is similar to Jones. My solution has been to make it personal and not, I mean, I, I'm not a climate scientist. And um, so it's not for me, it's not a factual, like I don't have all these facts at my disposal, but uh, last time I saw him, I said, wow, I just drove down through the Central Valley and it was so dry, I've never seen it like that. It really scared me. And so being able to speak from my own experience, I'm not uh, telling him he's wrong, I'm just talking about what I'm seeing and feeling. And I, I have no idea if that does anything to change his perspective, but I, I think it's a way for me to assert myself without moving into polarizing conversation. Renee Lertzman, I feel sometimes that even when talking to people who accept climate reality as here and now, that they still don't want to talk about it it's socially, that they will talk about it for 30 seconds and then change the subject because mm -hmm. maybe because I talk about it like it's a downer, maybe mm -hmm. I bring it up the wrong way, mm -hmm. or they're still like, oh, okay, let's talk about something lighter, more, hey, how about the Super Bowl, what, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that a real concern? What's going on psychologically there? These are not people who, these are people who accept it, but still don't want to hold it too closely or too long. Right, yeah, I think that, um it, it comes back to what is our experience and, um, and Josh's story about how getting in touch with our experience is disarming. But it also, for many of us, can be um, very difficult and challenging to know what to do with it and how to manage it. So with regards to how we're uncomfortable or reticent or unsure about how to relate with this topic, um, in my experience, it really comes down to anxiety and the kinds of anxieties that this topic can bring up for us and not even knowing at a conscious level that that's what's happening. And so as social beings, we're constantly sort of calibrating and monitoring with one another what's acceptable or not to, to venture into. And when we're not getting the cues from others that it's actually you know, not okay, that we may make someone else uncomfortable or feel threatened, um, we tend to sort of shut down. And that's why one of the um, developments that I'm really excited about is this, this notion of conversation and how do we sort of, what I would call break the taboo about talking about this in a way that's not touchy-feely, it's not particularly emotional, it's just very normal and it's very naturalized. So what does it mean in our workplaces or in our relationships to just say, hey, you know, I feel I just uh, saw something, I, I'm really bummed out about this program I saw or whatever, but just to kind of, what we're always wanting to do is like calm the nervous system down so that we can actually have a conversation and access what we feel and think about this, because it sort of goes back to this notion that anxiety kind of makes us dumb and shut down. And so if we think about how can we creatively find ways to disarm, so sharing personal experiences, so that it's not about, and what are you doing about this?